Hi everyone, today I wanted to do a video on driving efficiently with the Nissan LEAF. I'm going to demonstrate some techniques that I've been experimenting with over the last few weeks. Just like with any kind of car, being able to anticipate your stops ahead of time will be one of the biggest ways that you can increase your driving efficiency. My strategy was to learn how much pressure I needed to exert on the accelerator by watching the power meter as I drove. Obviously keep your eyes on the road and pay attention to what you're doing, uh, but that goes without saying. So while it may sound counterintuitive, limiting your regeneration as much as possible will help maintain your forward momentum uh, with the energy that you have already expended. This is because using regeneration is not 100% efficient meaning you won't get the same amount of power back that you already put into it. Also, I apologize for the shaky dashboard view. I was trying to hold my uh, phone while I was doing this. Not a good idea to do. So if you're going for efficiency, um, you don't really want to be using the e-pedal. You want to have as much control over how much regeneration is occurring versus actual friction braking. So at this point I'm going down a slight hill. I was keeping enough pressure on the accelerator that I wasn't engaging regeneration but not enough pressure to put more power into the wheels. You can see the power meter that this is the case. And um, some people will tell you that you can switch the car into neutral to accomplish this but I would advise against that strongly for a few reasons. There's uh, places that coasting in neutral is actually illegal. Uh, it doesn't appear to be the case where I live, but it's easier to just not do it than remember which states you can or cannot do it in. Secondly, if uh, for some reason you need to do an emergency maneuver, it's, um, you know, having to shift the vehicle back into gear takes time and in an emergency a second or two can be the difference between having an accident and avoiding an accident. This is why I recommend you learn how much pressure you need to apply to the accelerator to achieve the same result. So ahead I see that the light, the next light is red so there's no point in spending a lot of energy to get to the red light first. Um, so I just use as little as possible to get going without everyone behind me getting angry and then just coasting to a stop at the red light. So a good example on how not to drive would be like this guy that's passing me on the left here. Um, if you're trying to drive efficiently, he's basically, you know, accelerating really fast at the light just to catch up to the next light, which is red and so you got to spend all the extra energy to get going and then use your brakes to slow down and uh, you know we're at the same light it's not like he's really miles ahead of me or anything like that and you can see that this this particular car the one that's in front of me right now continues to do this for a few more lights um, accelerating uh, at a very high pace to pass as much cars as possible just to be caught up at the next red light. So the section that I'm coming up to now, there's a bunch of lights in rapid succession and I can see that there there's red lights. Uh, the one I'm going through is green obviously, but this light is red and there's another light coming up that's that's red. So, you know, I'm going in, I'm going to accelerate at a very slow rate, you know, enough that you're not being a jerk on the road by going really slow, but if you look at the eco meter on the gauge, there's like a little green thing under the white power bars, and if you try and keep it right where that is, that would be a good spot to be if you're trying to drive efficiently when you're accelerating. And I mean, I already see that there's a traffic light down a few cars up and it's it's turning yellow and red so 
uh, I'm not going to bother putting energy into the car because I know I'm going to be stopping. If there's a route that you can take that's not a highway, that are local roads, you should take the local roads instead. It's more efficient. You're going up a hill. You see a hill coming up. Oh, there's a red light there, so I'm not going to bother. But I'd try to build up some speed um, so that you have some momentum going up the hill. Sometimes it's good to just slow down a lot at first so that by the time you get to the car that stopped ahead of you, you're still moving slightly. Uh, that gives you a little bit of energy savings because uh, you don't have to start from a complete stop. But going up the hill, you can see I am using more power, especially because I was going only a few miles per hour and I need to build up speed to speed limit which is 30 miles per hour and uh, I see a red light up there so I'm just gonna keep my foot a little bit of pressure on so that I coast without regenerating uh, again regenerating is you're only gonna get about maybe 60% 60 to 75 percent efficiency on a good day so I'm just kind of coasting here and now I I'm comfortable enough to just take my foot off to regen that last little bit and then use the brake pedal to come to a complete stop. Uh, I've gone 105 miles uh, since my last full charge. I'm down to 30% battery so um, I had I've been driving mostly efficiently but you know a couple um, fast starts here and there just to zip in and out of a situation but for the most part it's uh, all been pretty light efficient driving uh, just keep an eye out what's not just the car in front of you but the car in front of them and the car in front of them and the car in front of them what the light is I can see the red light up there so there's no need to get there in a hurry, be the first person to the red light, um, just kind of coasting along here, waiting for the light to change. Um, you know, if you, as long as you maintain a little bit of pressure on that acceleration pedal, you're going to keep moving, especially downhill. And uh, that's what you want to do, and not block the intersection. Um, now that it's green, you can go. And a lot of these people will, you know, it's the right lane is ending, and um, you know they're going to try and cut, just go, and they don't feel like waiting in line, so they're going to try and cut you off. Um, just let him go. Forget about it. You're not, you're not in a race, and um, you know they're going to be the ones that are going to cause an accident. So just keep your distance. And this guy wants wants to cross. So we got a break and easy. I see a red light up there, so. No need to uh, no need to go fast. Guy's right on my butt. Gonna go past me on the right. Usually the right lane ends up here, so it's really just for turning and stuff. But. I'm not positive, but I think the last car in this line going through the intersection here is an electric BMW i3. Um, not an expert on identifying that, but I thought it was cool. So here I'm at the end of my drive, and you can see that I got 6 miles per kilowatt hour. That was actually my personal best. I hadn't been able to get more than 5.8. So I wasn't really trying to, but it's not that hard. 
if you just pay attention to what you're doing, you can get a really good miles per kilowatt hour or kilometers per kilowatt hour rating. Some bonus material, and this is the kind of stuff you got to watch out for. This person was passing everybody uh, from the bike lane, and it's a single single car lane here, but they came up on on the right through the bike lane to pass a bunch of cars. And uh, here that we're all stopped at a light, and they decide to, you know, just drive on the other side of the road to to get to where they need to go because they're more important than everybody everybody else. So you got to watch out for those important people. See you next time.